Welcome back again to another edition here at the Ivory Tower Collections. In today's video, we're going to once again be working on a Model 1 in television. Specifically, what we will be doing is we will be installing one of the latest additional RGB kits available from the Crayon King. Let's check it out. So what comes in the kit? Well, let's take a look at what all we have here. So we have the RGB board itself, naturally, but it also comes with an 8-pin mini den panel mount connector and a breakout PCB board for your RGB. But then we also have an S-Video panel mount AV connection with a breakout PCB. And what is this? We have a set of RCA jacks. We have our yellow, our white, and red. And then we have these two little boards here and finally, a toggle switch. What is all this for? Well, <laughs> I'm sure you've got a hint by now, given the fact that there's multiple connectors that are provided with this. So yes, the reason why there is not only the 8-pin mini den RGB output, but also S-Video and the RCAs is because Crayon's new board provides output for all of that simultaneously. Yes, it's very versatile, very cool. The purpose behind the toggle switch, and this is just a simple on-on, and the purpose for this is for the ability to change the palettes because there are two pre-programmed palettes in Crayon's board. So if for some reason a particular game, you don't like the way that particular palette or coloring uh, scheme looks, you can flip the switch if you want. Now in this install that I'm gonna show you today, I'm not gonna actually be using the switch, but it is provided in the kit and that's its purpose. That takes us to these little guys here, these two additional little small PCBs. These are what are known as QSBs, or quick solder boards. The purpose behind them is to aid you when installing the wiring for the video input lines that go to the RGB board and attaching them off of some IC chips. You do not need both of these boards. You only need to use one or the other. And in fact, you don't even have to use them at all if you don't want to, because again, it's just to help you in soldering on the wiring. This board over here is actually for attaching to the bottom pins of the color chip, U10. And then it provides the video, and in addition to power and ground, and the clock signals we need, and runs them to pads here. This QSB over here that has the 21 and the 20 on it is marking the pins, and is actually for use if you would rather take those signals off of the stick IC chip itself, which is one of the main graphics chips in the Intellivision console. But that's what their purpose is for. So let's talk a little bit more detail about the new RGB board. This is Crayon's newest RGB board. And uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but he gives all of his boards little different names. This particular board is called the Orange Peel. His previous version was called the Baked Potato. But uh, again, this board provides us not only the ability to output to RGB, but also gives us the ability to output through S-Video and composite additionally. So over here on the left-hand side of the board is your input side. So over here is where we have all our various inputs for the different video signals that we need in addition to 5 volts and ground. Over here on the right hand side we have the output side. So over here we have our pads such as for ground but then we also have a pad marked as C and another pad marked as Y. These stand for chrominance and luminance or your chroma and luma signals for your S video output. Next to that we have a pad that says CV that's for composite video output. Then we have another ground pad over here and then we have our output lines for B, G, and R, which is for blue, green, and red, S for sync, and then 5 volts. So this side up here, or up here, is mainly for RGB output. If you look just a little bit over towards the left of that, you will see that we have some additional 5 volt and ground pads here. And we also have some three other vias marked as BB, GB, and RB. Now this stands for blue bypass, green bypass, and red bypass. And the purpose for these vias is if you were going to install this kit and use something like a 9-pin mini DIN, say like for Sega Genesis use, then because some of these components are already inside of most RGB cables for Sega systems, it can cause the video to look rather dull and dark when you use the normal outputs. So by taking your blue, green, and red from here before these resistors, 
you're able to provide yourself with a much better, much cleaner picture for Sega cable use. So he has redesigned the board more easily for use for both types of installations. Over here is where we have our color select. And this is where you would wire up your wires for your toggle switch to change your palettes. And that's pretty much it as far as the individual vias or pads are concerned. But one other thing that you need to be aware of is we have these little jumper pads over here. Now, if you're installing this in a PAL console, you, then you'll actually need to solder up the pads for that are marked as PAL. Additionally, the, over, the one over here for NTSC, you'll need to put a little daub of solder on it to jumper that to indicate so that the board knows it's being used in an NTSC system. So what tools will we likely need for today's project? No surprise, we need that number two Phillips. We're gonna need some good wire strippers, maybe some small electrical tweezers, Probably gonna need some Q-tips and maybe a toothbrush to clean stuff with, some flush cutters, and perhaps also uh, some small needle nose pliers might come in handy. Although if you've got the tweezers, that might be enough for you. You're gonna make sure you got some good liquid flux on hand, some IPA, some alcohol to clean up with to help get the flux residue off. You'll need a good quality solder to use or whatever solder you might prefer that you like to use. You need to make sure that you've got a good temperature adjustable soldering iron. And then you're going to want some wire. As to, as to how much wire you're going to need, that's really going to depend on where you install the boards and where you need to route everything to in addition to how many of the outputs you actually want to run. But that should pretty much be the bulk of the items that you would need. Anything else that uh, I happen to think would be useful or handy, I will uh, mention as uh, during the process of the install. So let me get all these uh, tools out of the way. And uh, I'm going to start to take down this Intellivision. One thing I did forget to mention is that you will probably need some desoldering braid or a good desoldering pump since again, in order to get into the Model 1 and television, it does require you to remove the RF shielding. Both halves, preferably, just to make it easier to get to everything. And because of the massive amounts of soldering that has been used on all of these, uh, it can be kind of tricky. So initially, I'm just going to use some desolder braid to remove some of the bulk of this and then come back with my iron and perhaps like a small screwdriver to lift the tabs up one by one. Off, the, uh, off of each other so that I can get the whole assembly removed. I now have the main board and everything extracted and let's just talk about a few places where you might be able to install the board. So here's the RGB board here and uh, in the way that I currently have it oriented, this is the input side here and this is the output side. So really where you place this is just going to depend on where you plan to run all of your external outputs to. In my particular case and on this particular install, the output section will be over here. Uh, there's a lot of empty space over here for the most part. So as a result, a really good spot to install this would be right on top of the two ROM chips right here. This way my input lines can run this way and can run back up underneath the board easily enough to attach where they need to and then the outputs will be kept pretty much as short as possible. Now this particular installation the uh, individual that owns this, my client that owns this, has actually requested me to remove the RF modulator. And instead, I will be installing one of my 9-pin Sega Genesis style mini DIN jacks in place of where the RF used to be. One of the things that you're going to, a couple of the points that you're going to need, and I'm going to turn this around the other way so we can see this a little bit easier. So when you have the board installed, say like this for instance, some of the things that you are going to need is you're going to need a source for 5 volts and ground. And yes, if you use the little uh, QSBs, the little quick solder boards, these little guys right here, then you can actually pull those directly off of whatever chip you use for those boards. But 
I tend to not do that as much. I tend to prefer to kind of run them somewhere close by, and there's plenty of places. So I've done this, I've talked about this in other videos, but for five volts, you can actually get five volts from anywhere off of along this trace here. This is a large five volt rail right here, coming right off the other side of this ferrite bead. So yeah, I can just either uh, scrape away some of the solder mask up here and just solder a wire to that. It pretty much anywhere where I want to. As far as ground is concerned, there's actually a ground point right here. There's a big there's a big trace uh, here that's attached to all the ground. So I could also just do the same thing, just scrape away some of the solder mask and just solder a wire there. So one of the signals that you're going to need is going to be the clock signal. Now you can get it from pin 15 off of the uh, color IC chip over here. But I have found a spot that's actually much closer because if I install the RGB board here, which is my plan, it'll kind of sit right about there. Here's the clock input pad. Turns out that this resistor right here, which is R4 on the main board, this right le or I'm sorry, this left leg of the resistor, the, the way you're viewing it, is directly attached to pin 15 off the color IC chip. So it's a nice close spot to get the clock signal, and it also routes it away from all the other wiring, so there isn't a risk of any interference, so it kind of keeps it isolated, and that helps out with that. So that's where I'm gonna get my clock signal from. Now, one of the things this board does not handle is audio. You're gonna to have to get audio separately from somewhere else. Now, audio can actually be obtained directly off of the pins from the RF modulator, but again, because I like to make my runs fairly close, and I'm a big fan of soldering onto components, legs that are on the board, turns out you can also get it from right here. I believe this is capacitor, it's marked as C31 on the main board. And right here, if you just get it from this bottom leg, from the way that you're viewing it, uh, that's directly tied to audio. So that's that tends to be where I solder on my wire for my audio output. Aside from that, all of the rest of the connections we need to make to the board, which is going to be on the uh, pads marked as A, B, C, D, and E, are all going to be obtained from getting those signals from off of an IC chip. In most cases, and what I'm going to do here is going to be getting them off the color IC chip right here, U10. But you can also get them from the stick IC, which is this larger one right up here towards the top. So let's talk about where to get those points off the bottom. Okay, we're now looking at the bottom of the PCB, and this section, or this two sets of rows of pins right here, is actually the bottom side of the color IC t uh, chip, which is U10 on the board. Now, I have seen this a couple of other times. What we have here is a capacitor that has been factory installed off of, the, uh, off of two pins for off this color IC chip. But it's something to keep in mind because it will prevent easily using the QSB board, which is designed to fit over these pins because obviously this is in the way. Here, what you could do is you could desolder this capacitor from off of here, just notate what pins it was attached to then put the QSB board down into place, and then reinstall and resolder the capacitor back on again. And then it would just basically sit above where this QSB is, and then you got your access to your pads where you need to solder onto. Something else to keep in mind with the QSB board is that uh, with the orientation here, you have to remember that the way you're looking at the board right now, the, it's everything's kind of laid out in reverse. This is actually pin one of the color IC chip here. So this goes as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. The other reason why I bring that up is because the way that this QSB board gets aligned is basically in this direction. And there are going to be, there's at least one component lead that's sticking up that's kind of in the way. So you, what you would need to do is you would need to get some side cutters like this, and you would need to trim that really, really close and flush to the board before that would fit. Same thing applies for the other QSB, which is designed for mounting to the stick, which is right over here. And again, uh, similar to everything else, this is gonna be pin one, this is pin 20, this is pin 21. And the way that this mounts, it's actually got the pins labeled here, so it would actually need to go like this, and it would need to basically sit right there. Now, similar to the issue we had over on the color IC chip here, there is some stuff in the way here for where that needs to go. Uh, for the most part, it should be fairly flat, but it's not. I've got some, uh, what looks like some solder blobs kind of popping up here. 
So in order to flatten up this area, so this QSB, if you wanted to use this one, will sit as flush as it can to the board, you're going to need to get rid of the solder that's poking up through here. It just appears to be excess solder from whenever it went over soldered in place from the solder wave. So what you can do is just get some uh, desoldering braid. and just put it over those points so that you can flatten up the area. And now that area is flat enough that if I wanted to use this QSB, it'll sit perfectly right there on the board. And then I can just solder it on and then solder my, my wires to it. Because again, I like to keep my wiring as short as possible. So for this particular case, that would be uh, installing directly off of U10 because it's the closest points that I need to to wrap back around. Again, I'm gonna have to remove this capacitor and I'm going to have to trim this lead that's right here off of this component that's sticking up out of the way. So the first thing I will do is go ahead and try to cut that down a little bit. And in some cases, what I will even do is I will take my soldering iron to heat up the component and kind of push it down a little bit if I can. There we go. That just kind of smooths it down a little bit. The other thing I'm going to need to, I'm going to, need to do is to get that capacitor off of there, that bypass cap that the factory added. So the easiest way to do that is I'm just going to desolder these leads. Okay. And again, we'll reinstall that here in a little bit. I'm going to need to re-solder it to that pad and this one over here. So now this board, the QSB, just fits basically just right on top of that. It doesn't sit very flush. I wonder if that's because there's something in the way still. It's probably because of just some of the solder that's on some of these pins. All right, so what I will do is I will hold this down with some tweezers. There we go. All right, now that we have that in place, we can go ahead and solder on the rest of these. And again, you don't have to use the QSBs. It just makes, it, you know, Crayon King provides them as an easier method to attach everything to. And so you don't have to second guess where everything connects. And then what I need to do is to get this capacitor back on here. So that puts that bypass cap back in place and allows me to now be able to solder up to those pads more easily. Now again, I'm not going to be using the clock signal on this one, nor will I be using 5 volts and ground. So the only wires that I'm going to need to actually attach to are for the pads marked A, B, C, D, and E, which match the pads on the input side of the actual RGB board once I get it installed. For now, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of uh, solder to these pads, make it a little easier for me when I'm ready to get my wiring done a little bit later. There we go. So, that's how you would install one of the QSB boards. But, that takes care of that. So, now we'll worry about the RGB board a little bit. Okay, so I already talked before about the input and output sides. So again, here's the input side. The A, B, C, D, and E pads will be getting used here, and uh, that'll be my connection points off of that QSB board I just installed a little while ago. But in addition to that, I need to put a little bead of solder onto the NTSC jumper pad here just to make sure that it's set for NTSC. So all I gotta do is just get my iron there and just get a little bit of solder like that. Done. Now I had mentioned before that uh, my plan is to essentially install this RGB board right about here. However, again, in this particular installation, I have been requested to remove the RF modulator and instead to install my RGB output mini DIN connector in place of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the RF modulator now. I have already gone ahead and marked on the edge of the PCB these black marks. In between that is basically the center for where the original RF modulator used to sit. And this is to help me better center whenever I go to solder my nine pin connector in place. I will also be using one of my mount boards 
which actually solders on just like that. And this is to give me a little bit of extra height. Not going anywhere. So yeah, at this point, uh, I am ready to go ahead and essentially install the RGB board where I need to and get some wires run off of it. Another thing to keep in mind is wherever you decide to install this board, you cannot block these holes here that are in the main PCB. That's because this is where the support posts for the controller tray rest up against so yeah, you gotta make sure you leave these spaces free. Just to kind of summarize what's been done here, I wanted to review real quick what I did on the output side. So again, we're using a 9-pin Mini-DIN for this, which would be wired up for use with Sega Genesis RGB cables. So as a result, I have my audio wire, and I actually have that wired up to both the mono as well as the left and right pads on the output Mini-DIN. Additionally, we have our 5-volt line ran here. It's actually connected here. It's this orange wire. Again, you can use whatever colors you want. But uh, that's ran up in here, and then I have my sync wire, which is this gray colored wire here. 
And then I have the blue, the red, and the green. Now they're kind of separated on this breakout pad, but blue, red, and green are actually right here. And again, because this is using a Sega Genesis uh, cable setup, I'm actually using the bypass pads for this. If you were using like an 8-pin or a straight-through RGB type cable, then you, would, then you could also just solder to the pads directly up here, and that's what you would want to do instead. Again, those are obscured by this cabling, but uh, they're there. And then uh, last, you'll notice that I have another yellow wire coming off of the composite video pad. I have an actual wire that goes from composite video and ground. That's going to go to two separate RCAs. And then I've got another yellow wire here that's actually soldered into the VIA for composite video, and it's wired up to the Sega Genesis 9-pin mini DIN. And the reason for that is so, again, I could actually use a set of Sega Genesis composite audio video cables instead and get composite video from this jack. In essence, if that's all you were going to use, you wouldn't even need to install separate RCAs because you would be able to get everything you needed from pretty much just from this 9-pin jack. Also, the composite video is ran for compatibility for use with other cables such as the HD Retrovision cables, for instance. Just another quick note before I kind of start to assemble this back together is I want to talk about the RF shield sections again. Now, there's actually two sections that come off. There's the smaller metallic portion, and this actually covers the bottom side of the PCB. And then there's the larger black colored and taller RF shield. And this is the part that actually went on top, or the component side, like that. So regardless of however you want to set this up, just be advised, you don't have to replace the RF shielding if you don't want to, especially given the fact that in this particular case, the RF modulator has now been removed and is no longer going to be used. There's no real risk as much of interference from the system being an issue. However, I would advise still that you do install the smaller metal shield for the top. And this is really for uh, protection. However, one of the issues you're going to have when you want to install this is because of the wiring that was ran along the side, you'll notice that it's now going to get pinched by the RF shielding, and we don't want that. So one of the things you are going to have to do when you do an RGB install like this, and when you go to reinstall these RF shield sections, is you're going to need to cut away part of the RF shielding right about here or wherever your cables are coming through to allow them plenty of room. I now have all of my initial wiring in place and I'm ready to go ahead and essentially kind of put this back together just enough to be able to test it and make sure that I've got proper RGB output. So uh, I'm just going to quickly hook this all up and we'll be able to test it out. Be right back. I now have this Intellivision mostly back together again, um, just enough to be able to connect everything that needs to be to be able to give this thing a test. I also have a set of uh, RCA cables here to test out my audio and my composite. Additionally, I have my Insurrection Industries RGB cable here, RGB SCART cable for the uh, Genesis 2 plugged into the 9-pin mini DIN. The RGB will come out on the larger LCD here. It actually goes through a RetroTINK 2X SCART, uh, which then provides HDMI output to the LCD. That's why we have the color bars here. That's the default screen you get on the Tink 2X. And then over here on the little PVM uh, will be the composite image. So I have just a standard 201 test cartridge in place. Let's go ahead and power on. Now I will tell you there is a delay from the time that the Tink 2X uh, essentially sends a signal or before this LCD picks it up. So there's usually about two seconds delay or so. But here we go. And there we are, looking at the controller test screen. So again, we now have the um, composite over here, and we have RGB output here through my Tink 2X SCART. So let's go ahead and check and make sure everything's working good. Here's controller one, controlling great. No problems there. Let's take a look at controller two. Yep, everything's good to go. Do we have audio? Yep, we have audio.
Everything looks like it's good to go. Now the other question is, does the alternate pallet work? Let's take another look at the uh, controller test screen, which is a better way of seeing that. Okay, so this is actually considered the alternate palette from Crown King's uh, RGB board. This is the default palette here, which uh, results in a little, some colors are more vibrant, some colors are more dark, like you can see on the green on the controller there. But you can see that it affects both the composite and the RGB simultaneously. So uh, yeah, it's uh, very handy for that. If you had S-Video connected, it would also work for the S-Video as well. So yeah, we're good to go. This thing's ready to be buttoned back up and uh, sent back onto its way home and to be used, hopefully, for many more years to come with lots more video options. Thanks again for hanging out with me here at the Ivory Tower Collections this afternoon. Hopefully this guide is helpful for you in installing this board in your Intellivision. So yeah, thanks again, and I'll see you guys again.